Tokusatsu as an art form has at times struggled to maintain relevance in the modern age. While things are looking a lot brighter nowadays, it was a different story only several years ago. Things were especially rough between the mid-2000s and early 2010s. Output slowed to a crawl, and even most of the Juggernaut franchises were reduced to limping along, if that. And while he was far from the only one to sound the alarm or work to keep the tradition going, this video will focus on Hideaki Anno's contributions to modern tokusatsu. In 2013, the Evangelion creator pleaded, The technique of tokusatsu is about to become extinct. I beg you to help us save it. It is the technique that helped create anime. Though given his output since the early 2010s, he evidently decided to take matters into his own hands, and he has been doing so primarily with what I will call his Shin Tokusatsu anthology series. The first entry in the series was the 2016 film Shin Godzilla, a massive critical and financial hit that did wonders for a franchise that had become a shell of its former self in its homeland. The second entry will be Shin Ultraman, after losing its original summer 2021 release date due to production complications caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Shin Ultraman is now set to be released in May 2022. While Anno has writing and producing credits on the film, his friend and colleague Shinji Higuchi will handle directing duties. Higuchi is most famous for being the special effects wizard behind the stellar 90s Gamera trilogy and the director of the device of Japanese live action Attack on Titan films. And finally, that brings us to the third entry and subject of today's video, Shin Kamen Rider, a film scheduled to hit Japanese theaters in March 2023. What all these films have in common thus far is an interest in returning to the roots of storied tokusatsu properties while exploring them with the aid of modern sensibilities and technology. In each case, it's not the first time someone has attempted to do what Anno is currently doing. There have been remakes and reimaginings before. To name two examples, 1984's The Return of Godzilla and 2005's Kamen Rider the First, but those previous attempts were met with limited success and now Anno is taking a swing at it. Hide Akiano is and always has been a major tokusatsu fanboy. In the past, I've discussed his appreciation for the original Godzilla film, and I've discussed the great amount of influence the Ultra series had on his own works. What I haven't covered is Anno's fondness for Kamen Rider. Here he is decked out in Kamen Rider gear way back in his Daikon film days, and in a press release for the upcoming film, Anno stated, I got a lot out of the TV show 50 years ago, and 50 years later, I started this with the feeling that I'd like to return the favor in a small way. But what does he bring to the table? What can someone reasonably expect from an Anno-directed Kamen Rider film? First, as already mentioned, it appears to be a return to form for the series. Like Godzilla and Ultraman, Kamen Rider as a franchise has changed a great deal over the years, but similar to how Shin Godzilla restored Godzilla to being a vehicle to meaningfully tackle contemporary Japanese issues, and Shin Ultraman is a reimagining of the original 1966 TV series, Anno looks to be taking Kamen Rider back to the basics. The faithful recreation of the art direction and opening sequence of the original show seems to confirm this. Look at the hair sticking out the back of the helmet just like old times. But if that's not good enough, the actor playing Kamen Rider has already injured his leg. Now that's commitment. Jokes aside, Anno has also demonstrated his understanding and ability to replicate Kamen Rider in the past with a little tokusatsu film he directed back in the early 2000s, Cutie Honey. The 2004 film is a live-action adaptation of a manga and anime series of the same name. For those unfamiliar with Cutie Honey, it started as a manga series in 1973 and has been adapted several times in various forms in the years since. In short, it's about a magical transforming android girl who fights to protect the world from the evil organization Panther Claw. The series was created by Go Nagai, one of the most influential figures in anime and manga. Along with Cutie Honey, Nagai gave the world Devil Man and Mazinger Z and he's also credited as the creator or pioneer of the ecchi, super robot, and magical girl genres. Not a bad resume, but I digress. The 2004 Cutie Honey is a fascinating film for a couple of different reasons. It's easily one of the better results from either the East or West at translating animation to live action, and that success didn't come from running away from all the challenging elements. Minus toning down the hornier nature of the source material, Anno met most of these difficulties head on. It's not for everyone, or perfect even if you dig this sort of thing, but it's a fun and creative film worth viewing at least once. But the primary reason it has my attention today is the battle scene set at the Tokyo Bay Aqualine. Faced with daunting prospects and armed with a severely limited budget, Anno looked to Kamen Rider for inspiration on how to bring this to life. Allegedly, at the 27 Tokyo International Film Festival, Anno admitted that he blew most of his budget filming the sequence, and I wouldn't be surprised. 
This is where Cutie Honey most proudly showcases its Kamen Rider influence, and it might be a good indication of what to expect from Shin Kamen Rider. Let's put this fight side by side with fight scenes from the original Kamen Rider, a lot of it from the very first episode. Right away, the double jumps, leaps, kicks, ragdoll physics, and abundance of low angle camera shots should make the inspiration apparent. And take a look at the henchmen. In the 1973 anime series, the Panther Claw henchmen wore blue uniforms. While the colors have changed over the years depending on the iteration, this is the first time their uniforms are completely black. Maybe it was meant to be evocative of the Shocker henchmen from Kamen Rider. Hmm. As can be seen, the original Kamen Rider series was used as a template and from there, Anno added his own spin, his signature close-ups, eccentric scene composition, and rapid paced sense of editing. It's all of that plus the zany energy that Studio Gynex was trafficking in at this point. As started with FLCL and continued with shows like Die Buster, Guren Lagann, and the animated counterpart of this very film, Recutie Honey. Drawing on the flashy, over-the-top energy of the aforementioned shows and translating it to the third dimension as much as budget, time, and creativity allowed is an approach that makes sense when one takes into account that this film was meant to be a live-action adaptation of anime and manga. It all makes for a spectacle that can rival the high-cost, CGI-laden features of the West. Maybe not in polish, but definitely in creativity and entertainment value. Even with what will presumably be a far larger budget at his disposal for Shin Kamen Rider, it would be difficult to imagine Anno not embracing the charm and absurdity of classic television tokusatsu like the original Kamen Rider. In addition to nailing Honey, Anno has shown with Neon Genesis Evangelion that he's no stranger to the tense and unsettling. Remember, the earliest episodes of Kamen Rider had a darker edge to them, and ideally that would be acknowledged in some form in the upcoming film. There's already a bit of that with the new, beefier, predator-looking man-spider. But with all of that said, there's always the possibility that this speculation will age like milk in a scorching summer sun. I mean, Anno could very well throw a massive curveball. A thrilling political drama was the last thing I expected from Shin Godzilla, and to this day some people are still seething about the changes made to Godzilla. Nevertheless, this was a great excuse to talk about Cutie Honey, and I would recommend giving it a watch if you haven't already. But even if no one else enjoyed Cutie Honey, I know at least one man who did. Anyway, what do you think? What are you looking forward to or expecting from Shin Kamen Rider? And if you've already seen Cutie Honey, feel free to share what you think. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again next time.